decisions, as I say, change games. But when you're dealing with a tank that is a little bit trickier, then your thought processes have to change. And that's what we're going to look at. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujits Blitz. And this is video number four in my thought processes in game series. This time we're looking at difficult tanks. Well, tanks that I find difficult, you may not necessarily think they're tricky, but a lot of people do. First off, we're looking at the SU-101M. It's a tier eight Russian tank destroyer, and it's a pretty tricky tank to play with. Why? Well, firstly, it's got no gun depression because it's a rear mounted fixed casemate turret. Secondly, it hasn't exactly got great armor. And thirdly, whilst it's very nimble and mobile, it's got a Russian gun and a Russian gunner, which means it's not exactly the most accurate gun, and it doesn't dish out the biggest amount of derp. But you can play this tank successfully. So we came across a T-49 there. He's a little bit AFK, but I'm waiting for that reticle to come down. I'm pre-aiming it. Unfortunately, it's a Russian gun and it ain't gonna work. But you get to see, and I'm hiding behind rocks so nobody can shoot me. I'm going to leave the T-49 alone. I don't need him. He's irrelevant. I'm guessing they're all around the cap. One's in the cap or there or thereabouts. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm not spotted yet. No one's seen me. I've got some ability. I can stay in a bit of cover here. Maybe I can get around and reset the cap. I think it's a KV-3 in there. So there he is. Wait for the reticle to come down. Give him a smack. Uh, spotted. Now I need to get out of dodge. Why? Well, this thing will have the ability to bounce, but don't rely on that because it hasn't got the best armor. Now, there's a Yag Panther completely oblivious to me looking in the opposite direction. I'm worried about that Tankenstein, to be honest, because he can really hurt me. However, the Yag Panther now, prevent, now presents a good target. Get rid of him. So, I'm spotted. Well, I was spotted. I don't know if I'm still spotted. I want to get rid of the Tankenstein if I can. I'm not worried about the Emil. I'm not worried about the KV. So I'm going to hug around this ridge line. So I'm I'm staying unspotted. There comes the Tankenstein. Wait for the reticle. Boom. Stick a nice roll into him. He's now a one shot. I know he's got a long reload. I know he's not exactly the fastest tank ever. But if I go around that corner, he'll smack me. So I'm going to go up and, uh, using the fact that he hasn't got pants elevation in turret reverse. He's out the game, leaving just two tanks left: the Emil, uh, sorry, the, the Emil and the Leo. Now the Leo, I haven't seen. I don't know where he is, but I know where the Emil is. There he is. Look, so we can stick one to him, get him tracked, so other people can shoot him. We've already done what, just shy of one thousand and something damage. Somebody else takes the kill. Why? Because we've still got seven players on my team. And what I'm doing, I'm picking the targets and using the mobility and using the parts of the map that are going to give me cover. This allows me to get around and really use the tank. That's a difficult and notoriously difficult tank to get a good game. Now, I'm not setting the world on fire here. I've just done 2,000 and something damage, 2,245. I've bounced nothing, taken two kills, you saved all my hit points got a second class which isn't great but it's not bad for this tank and i'm quite happy with that it's a notoriously difficult tank now i'm going to move to a tank that a lot of people struggle in not the pros or the unicorns but a few you know us mere mortals do struggle in the next tank and i'm going to show you how my thought processes work so this is the fv4202 it's a great british medium However, it has almost zero armor. It's got a great gun if you've got the Hesh gun. It's got good mobility and it can really move around the battlefield. Like most British tanks, it doesn't dish out massive damage, but it's got a fantastic reload and it will take people by surprise. Now we did say we were going to the C cap and as you can see from the mini map, everybody thinks that C is actually A. That has put us in a pretty tricky predicament. There's only me and the T-54 here. There's no way I'm going to stay where the T-54 is. 
because that's just ludicrously asking for suicidal danger. So I'm rotating out. Maybe I can get a shot on the crown wagon. Only two of their tanks have spotted. Now only one. Oh, and here comes the rest of their team. So this is a danger. You know, warning signs and red flags. I can get a good shot into the bottom of the FV, but now I can see that literally all their team is here. So I need to get out of here because if they rush me, I am doomed. I am out. We got no support. The T-54 is down. He got absolutely annihilated. So I'm running away. I'm going to reset my camo. I'm going past all our heavies who decided to go to the A-cap. Okay, they took the A-cap. Kudos to them. But I'm getting out of dodge. And now I'm going to move and rotate my way back to where I just was. This, hopefully, will take them by surprise. Now, I've got the Hesh loaded, but there's no way I'm going to get Hesh through all that. Load the AP, get a shot into the T95, sorry, T92, bounce the T54, poke around the corner, and you can see they're retreating. So I'm now in a quandary. Do I push them, knowing and looking at the minimap that virtually all their team is around C, or do I not? And I say, well, no. They're concentrating on our heavies. They're not going to be worried about little old me coming up. Now, I'll make a mistake here. I should have loaded Hesh, put him in his back, in his engine deck, but I didn't. I loaded AP, but we got a good roll in. Maybe I can get another roll in. Oh, I load Hesh, but he turns just at the wrong time for me, and I get his tracks instead. <coughs> now, there's an object 268 over there. Can I get the bottom plate? Yes, I can. Get a nice roll back away. Now I'm going to pop up again and tempt him to shoot me. I'm gonna get one in and tempt him, and there he goes, he shoots and misses. I'm not gonna be able to get another shot in, so I need to move around the map again. So, I can see the T92 there, get one into the back of him, that was an H, that's an Hesh roll, and now I'm gonna get out of dodge, because there are just too many big tanks there that would like to eat me. So I'm gonna rotate around to their spawn, I know there's a crown bargain, and I know there's a 215B, that's one shot over here. So I'm going to come round, and oh, the 215B, I can't get in, but I can get the crown wagon bottom plate maybe, yes, and I get the bounce. Hopefully the IS-7 will take out the 215B, yes he does. This will now allow us to push on the crown wagon. Try and get the bottom plate again, yes we do, I don't risk the Hesh, because there's a carcass of the 215B. So I go for the AP instead. Now I switch back to the Hesh, get a low roll into the bottom plate, which is disappointing, but nevertheless, he's down. Maybe I can oh, get a low roll because it's a bad shot on the move into the T-54. Maybe I can get one into the A. Oh, no, I bounce him and he bounces my Hesh. So, but someone's going to take him out. Now I'm going to back around. Hopefully the T-54 is not stupid enough to go front onto those guys. He's going to rotate out and come my way, which, allow, which will allow me to shoot him. Yes, he does. Boom. He is out. We have now got an E-100 left. So load the APCR, then think, mm, maybe the hash. Mm, the APCR is not going to work. The hash. Uh, yeah, I can get one into his side. Move down. He's now one shot. The 268, our 268 is pushing him, not a good move. The E100 is going to be able to take him. Yes, he does, but I managed to take the E100. As you can see, what we did there, we constantly moved around the map. There was no point staying in the position we initially went to. We would have got deleted. Unfortunately, the T54 did get deleted. He stayed there too long. It was better to rotate out of there and change your position completely. And as you see, by doing that, we gave ourselves more options and we were able to be a lot more successful, resulting in a first class. Okay, it's not a mastery, but it's good enough for me. So we're gonna stick with the FV402. The FV this time we're in a supremacy game, again, on Black Goldville. Now, I've already looked at the makeup of their team and I'm expecting not much traffic here, but enough. So I'm running up here and hopefully we've got some support from the team. I'm not going to go rushing in. Um, I'm going to come right to this little area here. This gives me enough to go slightly haul down 
and maybe get some good shots into the Progetto. There we go, stick a nice HES roll into him. We can see the Progetto, and maybe we can get an AP into it. No, we get another Hesh into him. Now, the majority of their team is at the C cap, so this gives us a slight advantage. It means we can push on the tank on this side. We have the numbers to do this. There is a Sheridan, put a roll into him. It's a low roll, unfortunately, but it's good enough. He's going to get out of there. I'm going to chase him down, maybe get the shot in. Yes, and we get him gone. Now, I could carry on rushing down there, but there'd be no point. Maybe I can get shot across the map from the back. We've already taken the A cap. We've already got rid of two of their tanks. We are in a relatively good position. The Progetto, oh, somebody takes him just as I'm about to shoot. Now, I've got an E5 over in the corner, full of health, giving everybody a hard time. That is my next target. The E5 is a bloody good tank. Missed the shot. I'm now spotted, but I may be able to load better than he does and get a shot into his bottom plate. Yes, I do. Put a nice roll in. Can I get his turret? Maybe, just maybe, yes, we get another nice roll into him. Now we need to get or try to get around the back. So I'm picking where my route is going to be. It's going to be up here, around the back, avoiding the other tanks that can shoot me. Try and get around the back of him and put an engine deck roll in, which we do, leaving two heavies left. T22 gets in the way. There's an E100 and Kranwagen, I believe. I cannot remember. I can see the E100. There he is. Or is it a 215B? It's one of the two. So, the E100, I'm going to take a shot from him. I'm going to track him. I'll take a shot from him. But, no, it's a Waffle Tractor. But we're going to get round. No point using Hesh here. Try and track him again. Yes, we do. Carry on going. Forget the E100. Ed for the Waffle Tractor. Take a shot from him. But it's okay. We've got hit points. Put a nice roll into him. I can see there's a T22 coming around the back of him. He should be an easy kill, leaving just the E100 left. Yes, he is. We do 3,000 odd damage. I'm not going to get to the E100 in time. We have too many tanks, but we did our job. And as you see, what we're doing here is moving constantly around the map, looking for those areas of cover and taking the risks of being shot when we needed to take those risks. Okay, it's a second class, but we did 3K damage with a top tank, we took two kills. I'm pretty happy with that in that tank. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been my take on playing difficult tanks and my thought processes in the game, which I hope has been useful. By all means, comment and everything below. If you've got any decent replays, wing them across to me, fujitsblitz at gmail.com. Massive, big thank you shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. Without you, these videos would be a lot harder. And my subscribers, without you, the videos would be pointless. And until the next time, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about. Having fun, being happy.